It was the summer of 1949. Young geologist Vadim Kolpakov was on a mission to Siberia. His job was to draw a geological map of the area. While on duty, he came across something so mysterious and remarkable, it continued to puzzle experts decades later. Though it's now more famous as the Potomsky Crater, locals had dubbed it Fire Eagle Nest, probably because it looks like a giant bird nest sitting on the hill. But what was hiding inside would be the most surprising and baffling discovery. Well, if you could get close enough to uncover its secrets. According to the locals, even wild animals are scared to go near it. Kolpakov began walking towards it slowly. From far away, it looked like a giant bird nest indeed. The closer he got, the bigger it became. The crater appeared to be fresh. It was also deserted. Trees didn't grow on the slopes of this natural structure, and the winds didn't carry enough soil to make plant growth possible. As for animals, none in sight. He climbed all the way to the top and discovered something unbelievable. It was so hot that he felt the sweat running down his forehead. It was as if he was close to a fire source. His first thought was that this thing is volcanic. When he looked down, he was met with a perfectly circular mound in the middle. The round hump in the center of the crater was around the height of your standard telephone pole. Such things don't appear in volcanoes, even in extinct ones. And there aren't any around here that link to this peculiar mount. Unable to solve the strange appearance of the bad place, Kolpakov went back home and told everyone about his discovery. What was once a local anomaly would soon become a worldwide mystery. The whole scientific community started digging and coming up with theories. A lot of experts agreed this must have been the work of a meteorite. So they ran tests to see if a meteorite impact could create this double mound structure. The findings? The crater was likely formed by a falling, somewhat spherical object made from a dense material that could only exist in space. More experiments found that it wasn't just one object falling from space, but two. When the first meteorite hit the Earth, it exploded and formed the crater. Then the second object followed, but it was slowed down by the first impact and sunk deep into the ground. But others objected, claiming that meteorites can't fly one after the other and hit the planet in the exact same spot. With so many questions still unanswered, more experts came to the Siberian taiga to take a shot at solving the mystery. One of them studied trees' rings and collected wood samples. They figured out that the crater likely appeared about 300 years ago. They also discovered that vegetation in this spot grew way faster than usual. After ruling out other growth-boosting factors, like better soil content and more sunshine for some period, the only guess they were left with was radiation. Yes, the experts knew that when exposed to high doses of radiation, trees and plants grow faster. But the radiation levels on and around the crater were low. At some point in the last 300 years or so, there must have been radioactive material in the area. Was it a space rock? A unique type of volcano? All theories and no conclusions. Expeditions continue to this day in search of answers. Wow, talk about noisy! Toadfish have a unique ability. They can create a very strong sound. The human ear usually can't hear it, especially if only one fish is making the sound. But if many fish are making the sound at the same time, well, it's going to be hard to forget, and you may not be able to stop hearing it. Toadfish are a common part of the fauna off the coast of Sausalito in California. And every year, thousands of them gather in the shoals to party and scream. Together, they create a collective sound that can be easily heard by those in the houses near the shore. The noise, which can be described as a low hum, can even penetrate into the city center. Some people get bothered by this constant humming. This is a unique natural phenomenon, but there's a catch. At some point, the fish swim away from the shore, but the sound remains. Also, scientists have proven that this fish-made noise can't spread through the city, and many residents of the coastal areas don't hear it. 
But still, some people continue to hear this strange hum. In a similar case, imagine that you've moved to a small village in Scotland. You rent a house, have dinner, and go to bed. As you're settling into sleep, a strange hum permeates your room. It sounds like someone started their truck somewhere in the distance. The sound is similar to the sound of a low, loud bass that comes from a speaker. The hum keeps you awake. You get migraines and even feel nauseous. In the morning, you find out that some other locals also hear this terrible buzzing. They tell you about a huge factory located nearby. Machines, engines, steam boilers, big air vents, and generators emit a loud, heavy hum that passes through the air. Sound waves spread throughout the village and annoy people with a sharp sense of hearing. You've been hearing this sound for several days and suffering from insomnia. Then, one day, the factory goes bankrupt. All the workers leave their positions and turn off all the engines and fans. Great, you'll finally sleep in peace. But you know what? The sound doesn't disappear. It follows you wherever you are. And it's not about the factory or the fish or the truck engine. Imagine that you're walking down the streets of a small English town. There are a lot of planes flying right above you. The hum they make follows you. Even in bed, you can hear it. You wonder if there's an airport nearby. You ask the locals and find out there's not even a runway here. But where does the sound come from? You raise your head to look up and see a clear sky. There are no planes, but there's noise. And you're not the only one who hears it. Some locals are sure that the hum comes from high-speed traffic on the highway. Thousands of cars drive in two directions and leave massive sound waves behind. But at night, there are no cars there, and the sound remains. Maybe you're going mad. People's stories about the hum save you from this madness, and it's not just the residents of this town that know about it. About 4% of people on the planet hear the hum. Strangers tell each other about the hum that prevents them from sleeping and concentrating on something. The sound follows them everywhere and doesn't stop. Some people hear it in certain places, so they move to other cities. Maybe you're hearing it right now and not paying attention. But be careful. If you recognize it once, you won't be able to stop hearing it. There's a website and a forum on the internet dedicated to the hum. People from all over the world put geolocations in places where they heard this mysterious phenomenon. You can find thousands of these coordinates on the site and even add your own. People describe different levels of noise and share their sources. Some theories say that the hum is the sound of our planet coming from the core. Someone else is sure that it comes from the atmosphere. Scientists have even been consulted, but they also don't know the reason for this phenomenon. People use high-frequency microphones and amplifiers to record the hum. Almost everywhere, they detect a low-frequency vibration that is practically impossible for the human ear to catch. It mixes with the sound of cars, printers in the office, and subway trains. Sometimes people stop hearing it, but the hum increases when they lie in bed. Many records about the hum say that people hear it in industrial cities. Sometimes these sound seekers manage to find the source. They ended up being factories with running generators where the sound was getting into the ventilation system and where the fans spread it outside the building. When the generator stopped working, the sound disappeared. But these are rare cases. More often, no one can find the source of hum. One of the most famous places where you can catch it is in the city of Taos in New Mexico. About 2% of locals hear a strange buzzing every day. Some tourists experience it too. Scientists came to the city to study this mystery, but found no explanation. Some theories say the usual acoustics of this place caused the hum. Some folks think it's just a hallucination or the power of suggestion. Everyone talks so much about the hum that the brain creates an illusion of a sound that doesn't exist. Locals believe the nature of the buzzing is mystical and associated with bad spirits. Whatever it is, no one has found out the truth yet. The hum that people hear all over the world may be the result of seismic activity in the tectonic plates under the ocean waters. Huge chunks of the Earth's crust are slowly moving and colliding with each other. This creates a noise that reaches us in the form of a hum. But why do only a few people hear it? Perhaps about 4% of the world's population has a unique sense of hearing. In any case, scientists haven't been able to confirm the tectonic plate theory either. Some researchers point to submarines as the reason. They use low-frequency radio signals to communicate around the world. 
These signals spread over the surface and can affect the human body. When the ear catches these sound waves, it reacts and causes vibrations similar to humming. This happens because low-frequency sound energy collides with the soft tissues of the skull and stimulates the auditory nerve. In fact, it's not even a sound. It's a hallucination that is created by your brain. But still, no one can confirm this theory either. Perhaps thunderstorms can create the hum phenomenon. About 8 million lightning strikes hit the Earth every day. Some impact creates a powerful electromagnetic charge. Lightning penetrates the air and makes it resonate between the Earth's surface and the ionosphere. Mmm, yeah, it sounds complicated, but the principle is simple. Imagine that you're blowing onto the neck of a bottle. Hear this low hum? Lightning works similarly with air. And that's just one hit. Imagine millions of these strikes. The sound waves spread all over the planet, and some people hear them. Lightning constantly strikes all the time, so the hum never stops. In 1973, scientists put forward a theory that the reason for the hum is the jet stream shearing against slower-moving air. In simple words, wind and fast air flows intersect slower ones. As a result, a whistling sound appears, and electric towers and power lines amplify it. By the way, the first reports of the hum appeared in the 70s. People learned about this phenomenon from the small British city of Bristol. Dozens of residents heard this strange noise in different parts of the town. In the beginning, they ignored it. Then the sound became increasingly more irritable. It prevented people from working and living their everyday lives. They couldn't sleep and couldn't concentrate on anything. There was a warehouse with industrial fans in a neighboring town. The locals were sure that this was the reason for the hum. The warehouse stopped working a few years later, but the sound remained. You may even be able to hear it right now if you visit the city. There are many theories about the hum, but you can reduce almost half of them thanks to one factor. Tectonic plates, seismic activity, lightning strikes, the Earth's crust, and resonating air are logical explanations. But look at all the records about the noise. People hadn't mentioned this until the 70s. If this phenomenon had appeared earlier, many newspapers would have written about it. Apparently, the hum is not a mystery of nature. Perhaps this is a consequence of all of our technological achievements. Factories, power lines, airplanes, cars, ship, trains, microwaves, and generators create an imperceptible background noise that most people ignore. We're so used to all these noises that we have forgotten what silence is. Perhaps our brain made the hum inside our heads to respond to our noisy world. If you start to listen carefully right now, what kind of sounds will you hear? Where are they coming from? And is there the hum among them? In the northeast of Thailand, a family of enormous stone whales swim through a forest. These aren't real whales, of course. They're actually a part of a 75 million year old rock formation. A long time ago, this part of Thailand was just a desert. The movements of the Earth's crust push sandstone up to create these fascinating mountains. Reachable by anyone willing to spend a day hiking up the network of trails, this landmark is becoming increasingly popular with tourists. Once you reach the back of one of the whales and look down on the endless sea of green below, you'll know why. On these hikes, you'll find waterfalls, a wide variety of exotic plants and animals, and from the very top, you can even look straight across to the neighboring country of Laos. Their shapes look just like whales swimming together. No wonder this place is called Three Whale Rocks. What a way to see Thailand on the back of a giant stone whale. While digging in a Canadian mine in March 2011, a worker made a shocking discovery. They found a nearly perfectly preserved nodosaur specimen. This extinct dinosaur weighed in at around 3,000 pounds and grew to 18 feet. Despite being over 110 million years old, the nodosaur was so well-preserved that you can clearly see the heavy body armor and scaly skin that covered it. It took almost an entire year of painstaking work to uncover the incredible find. The fossil was finally unveiled in a Canadian museum in 2017. Unexpectedly, analysis of the skin showed shading that the nodosaur may have been capable of camouflage, like modern-day geckos and moths. This is in addition to the spines and scales that already make it a walking tank. 
still being studied today. This nodosaur could go down as one of the most important fossils discovered in a long time. Its detail could help us to uncover even more of the mysteries of the past. The Voynich Manuscript is the world's most mysterious document. Since its discovery in 1912, the manuscript has been a complete mystery to everyone that comes across it. It is heavily illustrated with strange pictures of alien plants, unknown objects, and the zodiac symbols. But the most interesting aspect of it is the writing. The language used in the text is completely indecipherable. No one knows what it says, who wrote it, or where it was written. We don't even know if it was a real, functional language or if it was just created for this one text. The drawings of different plants are equally intriguing. Most of the plants in the manuscript are identifiable as plants, but they don't match up with any known species. A professor of applied linguistics in England claimed to have deciphered some of the characters in the book. But we haven't managed to uncover any more information about this mysterious text. If you're ever going to head down under, don't forget to pay a visit to the mystery craters in Queensland. Halfway between Bundaberg and Jinjin is one of Australia's most baffling finds, and that's saying quite a lot for Oz. In 1971, the site belonged to a farmer growing zucchini and potatoes. As the farmer tried to expand his farm, he kept hitting large rocks in the fields while plowing. When he took a closer look at the rocks in his way, he found marine fossils in some strange craters. The farmer passed his finds on to geology professors, who set out to research the formations. When the geologists began digging around the area, they uncovered a huge layer of sandstone and ochre stain that was completely covered with craters. There were 35 craters in total, and the layer of rock is estimated to be around 25 million years old. The scientists studying this mystery believe that hot springs, former ocean activity, and meteors are the prime suspects behind the craters. And I'd like to know about the characters who named those towns Bundaberg and Jinjin. <laughs> what fun names! Now, the Antikythera mechanism is an ancient computer of sorts that's still baffling scientists with its extraordinary design. Around 2,000 years ago, a Greek ship sank off the coast of the island of Antikythera. The wreckage was discovered in 1900, and divers salvaged some of its ancient artifacts. When archaeologists started sorting out the discoveries from the wreckage, they came across an object that didn't seem to fit with anything else. The wreckage was ancient, but they found an incredible device that seemed far too technologically advanced. The machine functioned as a calculator, allowing its user to follow time, the movement of stars, eclipses, moon phases, and even countdowns to events like the Olympics with amazing precision. This level of technology is almost impossible to explain coming from an ancient Greek wreckage. No mechanism would come close to the machine until the 14th century when geared clocks began to be built in Europe. How was the device created so long ago, 1400 years before its time? Could the sinking of the Antikythera and the loss of the calculator have held the development of technology back by hundreds of years? Meanwhile, the Caucasus Mountains near the Black Sea are one of the few areas of Europe that haven't experienced much human impact, even though most white-skinned people in the world are referred to as Caucasians. Despite this, archaeologists have found many ancient megalithic structures in the area. The house-like structures, known as dolmens, contain jewelry, bronze tools, and assorted pottery. Archaeologists don't know who built them, why they built them, or what their true purpose is. The stones were either two stones held together by a large stone as a roof, or smaller stones stacked as walls with a hole only on one side. There have even been stone plugs found that to seal whatever is inside. What's even stranger about these stone formations is that they aren't just found in the Caucasus. They're found all over the planet, in Australia, South Korea, Colombia, Africa, and even France. Their purpose is unknown, so all scientists can do is speculate. The discovery of the tomb of the first emperor of China in 1974 
is well documented. Who could forget the finding of 8,000 terracotta warriors protecting the entrance? Most of the statues are warriors, each with their own unique facial expressions. There are even full-size terracotta horses in chariots too, just for extra protection. What isn't well known is that some areas of the tomb haven't ever been entered yet. Archaeologists are very reluctant to open the site because the whole area is unstable. There might be something amazing inside, but no one wants to risk losing an amazing piece of history. Eventually, researchers will send tiny robots into the unopened tombs to give a better idea of what's inside. Until then, archaeologists have to wait a little bit longer for the secrets. In southern Costa Rica, people have discovered a collection of mysterious stone spheres. There are over 300 scattered around the landscape, and some are almost 7 feet across. No one knows their purpose or how they were produced. One thing we do know is the material they were made from – gabbro, a volcanic rock. Carving the stones into their perfect spherical shapes would have taken a lot of time and effort. Researchers think they might have been made by a now extinct group, using barely any tools. The best theory is that they used small stones to chisel away at the edges of boulders, before using sand to smooth the sides. Some think that they may have an astronomical purpose, or even used as markers to point the way towards something. But no one knows anymore. Their significance is lost with the civilization that created them. Off the southern tip of Japan, and 75 miles from Taiwan, lies the Yanaguni Formation. A local diver first noticed these formations in 1986, while searching for new dive sites to take tourists. Seeing the large steps that resembled a pyramid, he thought he discovered an underwater city. Some archaeologists believe that the structures could have been signs of a fabled Pacific civilization, like Atlantis, that vanished beneath the waves thousands of years ago. There are also reports of marks in the stone, suggesting quarry work. Some people even claim that there were faded images of humans and animals carved into the stone. None of this is backed with much evidence, though. Most experts believe that the formation is natural, and the symmetry of the rocks has been overstated. They are not as straight as reported, and it appears to be solid natural rock, rather than carved blocks. In other words, the resemblance to a sunken civilization is just a coincidence. In Turkey, archaeologists believe they might have found the oldest known architecture in the world, over 10,000 years old, according to experts. Found in an area that used to be home to ancient farming communities, these monoliths, which stood up to 18 feet high, were likely used for social events and rituals. Not much is known about them, though. These large stone structures seem to be human-shaped, with images of animals carved into them. Nearby, researchers have found signs of domestic housing, suggesting that these amazing monuments might have signaled the start of the move towards modern civilization. The Kimbaya artifacts are some of the most interesting artifacts ever found. The most curious thing about them is how closely they seem to resemble modern airplanes. They're so aerodynamic that modern scientists believe they might even be able to be used as blueprints for a functioning aircraft. In 1994, two aeronautical engineers created larger-scale models of these artifacts. They prove that the designs fly, with a little help from modern engines. What's really astonishing is that these objects are possibly thousands of years older than the first airplane by the Wright brothers. Just another one of our world's fascinating mysteries.